The pigments involved in gathering light for photosynthesis are responsible for the range of colors in algae, and have been used since algae were first described to separate them into different groups. There are three main chemical groupings of the photosynthetic pigments. Chlorophylls, which are green, carotenoids, which are the reds, orange, and yellows, and phycobilins, which give reds and blues. Thin layer chromatography, or TLC, can be used to quickly and inexpensively separate collected pigments from algae. You can immediately see that you can separate the green, the red, and the brown algae by pattern of pigments alone. In a later lab, you will separate pigments by TLC. As you can see, the green algae are the only group with the carotenoids violoxanthin and neoxanthin. The red algae have high amounts of cryptoxanthin, and the brown algae have fucoxanthin. Generally, each of the algal types consistently shows similar pigment profiles. The three major types of pigments are distinguished by their physical and chemical properties. Chlorophylls are lipids that bind a magnesium atom and are the green pigments. Carotenoids are also lipids made from long carbon-carbon chains and may have ring structures at either end. These give the yellow, orange, and red colors found in algae. Phycobilins are water-soluble pigments usually bound to a protein molecule and give the reds and blues. The light used for photosynthesis has wavelengths ranging from 400 to 700 nanometers. Basically, this is the same portion of the spectrum near eyes see. The region of the spectrum is called photosynthetically active radiation, or PAR. Each of the pigment types absorb energy in specific portions of the PAR spectrum. The principal pigment is chlorophyll A. It is found in all oxygen-producing algae, which is all eukaryotic algae and cyanobacteria. Chlorophylls B and C absorb in other regions of the PAR in different types of algae and transfer the energy to the chlorophyll A molecules. Carotenoids aid in gathering light, or light harvesting, and also transfer energy to the chlorophyll A. Carotenoids also function to protect chlorophylls from damage when there is too much light. Phycobilins are involved in light harvesting. As you can see from the absorbance spectrum for the pigments, the overlapping peaks of light absorbance covers nearly the entire PAR spectrum. Algae can increase or decrease pigment content, or change the relative pigment ratios, based upon environmental cues. As you can see in the diagram in the water column, red and violet light do not penetrate very deep, while blue and green penetrate much deeper. Algae near the surface may produce pigments that absorb in the red and violet, as well as the other colors, in order to maximize the amount of light energy they absorb. Algae at 30 meters deep need to be able to harvest light in the blue and green par, and probably do not even produce pigments that absorb in the red. It is energetically inefficient to produce pigments that absorb red light for algae living at depth. Why make a pigment to absorb light that is not there? This would be an extreme waste of energy on the part of the algae deep in the water column. As the algae come to the surface, then they may switch to the production of other pigments as the light environment changes. As previously stated, chlorophylls are fat-soluble pigments that bind a magnesium atom and are responsible for green color in algae. Seven different types of chlorophylls are reported in algae. Chlorophyll A is present in all groups of algae. Chlorophyll B is present in the chlorophyta or green algae, eugenophyceae, and the chloracneophyceae. Chlorophyll C1 is present in the stromenopiles and the haptophytes and includes the brown algae. Chlorophyll C2 is present in dinoflagellates, stromenopiles, haptophytes, and cryptophytes. The chlorophyll Cs do not have the long phytal tail of the other chlorophylls and there are at least five and possibly more chlorophyll Cs. We are only showing the two most common. Chlorophyll D was originally thought to be present in some members of the rhodophyta, or red algae, but it was more recently found to be in a cyanobacteria that lives symbiotically on the red algae. Chlorophyll E is present in the xanthophyceae, or golden algae. Chlorophyll F was recently discovered from stromatolites, an ancient type of cyanobacterial colonial structure, and it is believed that the chlorophyll F is probably produced by cyanobacteria. The arrows pointing to the differences in the chemical structures of the chlorophylls show that these are small differences, but these small chemical changes make a large difference in the region of the PAR the molecule absorbs in. Carotenoids are present in almost all algal groups. Carotenoids with rings at the end of the carbon chains have vitamin A-like activity, and the carotenoid beta-carotene is a source of vitamin A in your supplements. 
These are the fat soluble red, orange, and yellow pigments closely associated with the chlorophylls in the photosynthetic apparatus. They are also very strong antioxidants and also function to protect the chlorophylls from damage under high light, called photodamage. There are two types of carotenoids found in algae the carotenes. Carotenes do not contain oxygen atoms in the molecule. Some examples are alpha and beta carotene, which are the orange color in carrots, and lycopene, which is the red color in tomatoes. The other class is the xanthophylls. These carotenoids are oxygen-containing derivatives of carotenes. Examples of xanthophylls are lutein and zeaxanthin, both of which are responsible for the yellow color of egg yolk. So carotenes, no oxygen. Xanthophylls, oxygen. This diagram shows the biochemical pathway to produce the carotenoids. In the diagram, the carotenoids are shown in colored boxes that approximate the color of the pigment. In between each box is the name of the enzyme protein that converts one carotenoid to another. The carotene part of the pathway, shown in the black box, is common to all algae. The red algae only have the enzymes to make lutein and zeaxanthin. The green algae have the enzymes to convert zeaxanthin to anthrozanthin, violoxanthin, and neoxanthin. The brown algae only contain the enzymes for the beta carotene part of the pathway, but convert neoxanthin into fucoxanthin and diadenoxanthin. The question marks show that we still have not isolated the enzymes that perform these conversions. The different pigment profiles for the red, green, and brown algae shown in the TLC plate are the result of these differing inherited biochemical pathways. When comparing the diagram of the biochemical pathways to the TLC plate, you can see the various carotenoids match up with the groupings in the biochemical chart. Beta carotene is in all three phyla. Lutein is only in the red and green algae. Neoxanthin is in the green algae and faintly appears in the brown algae, because it's mostly converted into fucoxanthin in the brown algae. Phycobilins are water soluble pigments. They are covalently bound by proteins called phycobiliproteins. Phycobiliproteins are red and blue in color and are present in the cyanobacteria, red algae, glycophyta, and cryptomonads. Phycobiliproteins function as intended for efficient light harvesting. There are two classes of phycobilins present in algae. Phycosan and allophycosanin are made of the phycobilins bound to slightly different proteins. These are the blue colored pigments, and they are present in the red algae and cyanobacteria. They are also the source of blue pigment for makeup and natural food coloring. The other phycobilin protein is phycoerythrin, which are the red colored pigments. Phycoerythrin is present in members of the rhodophyta or red algae. This molecule is highly fluorescent and is used extensively for non-invasive medical imaging. The diagram shows the basic organization of the phycobiliprotein antenna called a phycobilisome. The allophycosan is attached to the photosystem in the membrane. The blue phycosanins are connected to the allophycosan and form a bridge to the red phycoerythrin. Some algae only have the allophycosan and phycosanin part and do not have phycoerythrin. This table shows the different pigment profiles across the algal phyla. Chlorophyll A is common to all of them, but the other pigments are distributed differently depending upon the phylum. They all contain carotenoids, but they are different carotenes and xanthophylls and in different ratios. Even within the same species, the carotenoid profile can change depending upon the environmental conditions. Other phyla contain phycobilisomes, while others cannot even produce the phycobilin pigment or the associated protein. Upon finding an unknown species of algae, the pigment profile will go a long way to help identify what it is. The absorbent spectra of algal cultures can give you a lot of information about the condition of that culture. The purple line shows the absorbance of PAR by a culture that is pure green algae. The red line shows the absorbance of PAR by a culture that is pure brown algae. The other line shows the absorbance of PAR by cultures that are various mixed ratios of green and brown alga. These spectra match what we observe growing in the raceway ponds. Ideally, you would use the information obtained from this quick and expensive test to detect the contamination by brown algae very early so you might be able to correct the situation before you need to drain the pond and start over. There are other non-photosynthetic pigments in algae such as cytonemin. Cytonemin is a yellow-brown pigment not involved in light harvesting. It effectively absorbs ultraviolet light but not PAR. 
Cyanobacteria in extreme environments produce cytonemate and are the brown organisms in this photo of a hot spring at Yellowstone National Park. You can think of cytonemate as a 3.5 billion year old sunscreen responsible for allowing life to leave the oceans and colonize the land under intense UV light hitting the surface of the earth before the ozone layer formed to block UVC. Cytonemin may eventually be the sunscreen you use at the beach. It blocks a wider range of the UV spectrum than any other commercial sunscreen and it turns your skin brown. Another valuable non-photosynthetic pigment found in algae is marinine. It is a water-soluble blue pigment produced by diatoms of the genus Haslia. In France, these diatoms are fed to oysters to turn their flesh green. Green oysters are 15 to 20 percent more expensive than regular oysters at market. The structure of marinine is unknown. It is possibly a polysaccharide or polyphenol, which is a sugar-based molecule. Some proposed biological functions for marinine include photoprotection, or protection of the photosynthetic machinery under high light. It could be an antibacterial agent, potentially protecting oysters from infection. It would also be an anti-diatom agent, so Haslia could lower the number of competitors in the environment. There's still much to learn about algae.